Hi and welcome Leverage WP. Uh, today I'm going to be working with a client site that you may have seen before, themountainspace.com. And my client has requested that I replace the global header with um, a hello bar or what you might call a welcome bar with a current message that he can replace at the very top of every page of the website. Right now we don't have a global header here on the website that contains um, a place where inside of Divi here that I can uh, revise this for different pages of the website or turn on and off um, this global header with different messages depending on changes that I want to make. And so inside of this Divi site at themountainspace.com, I'm going to be converting this default header in Divi over to the global header system using the Divi theme builder system. And so let's get started. Uh, this site is hosted at Gridpane and I do have a staging site uh, that is uh, uh, present here where I can make my safe updates as well as changes in a staging environment while the live site does not get interrupted for any users. And then when this is finished, I can just bring the staging back to live with one click. And so I've logged into my grid pane hosting here. And of course, under staging, uh, I've done a search for part of the URL name. And uh, here it is, staging.themountainspace.com. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the current live site that you can see right here. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that over to staging. Now, I'm not worried about preserving the original staging site that I have in the background. I'm done with that from previous changes that I've made. And so I'm checking allow the staging push without backing up the staging site. I don't need that site taking up space on my server. And so I'm going to push all files in the complete database. And now I'm going to click push live to staging. Here's a message. The staging push will now proceed. And so I can close that. And as you look here, uh, you can follow along as I'm getting these staging notices at grid pane. And let me just pause the recording right here because as you may have noticed, my lighting battery just died. And so as this is finishing, I'll pause the video here and come back when the staging push has completed. Okay, I'm back. Now you can see that in uh, my grid pane account here, the final staging notice it says is right here. I can close, but you can see that the second line live push completed it is highlighted here inside my grid pane account. And so now I have a staging site, which is uh, a, an exact copy of this site right here themountainspace.com, although it's at a different URL. And so as not to confuse myself, I'm going to go ahead and just add the word staging dot here at themountainspace.com. And I have this protected behind a force login system so that when I'm working on the staging site, I actually have to be logged in. So the public can't find this staging copy. Uh, Google and the search engines also can't find this staging copy and start to list them in the directories, which would be confusing for users uh, and everything like that. And so let me go back to the uh, staging site. You didn't see in the background what I was doing there, but uh, you can see now I have staging.themountainspace.com as the URL here on the website. And um, I'm going to keep monitoring that that staging URL remains the same. If I roll over any of the buttons here, you can see down at the bottom left, this services. Chrome will show me the URL down there at the bottom left. If I click services, uh, then uh, this is also live at the staging subdomain slash services. And so this copy is what I'll be working with and I can tell that I'm logged in by the uh, admin bar here at across the top. And so there's a few things that I can take care of here on the staging site um, in order to prepare myself for building a new global header here.
And now this join button is an external link and uh, that just goes to the sign up external service that my client has in place in order to book the different um, offices and uh, day passes and hot desks, etc. So I'll make sure I don't go in and log into members dot. This is at a different service. I'm just going to hit back right here and home. You can see that on every page of the website, this default Divi header is what's in place. The client's requested that up here at the top, I add a customizable message to this bar at the very top. Now in Divi, this bar is known as the secondary menu. And so now I'm in the back end here. I'm in the WordPress dashboard. If I go under appearance menus, uh, you can see in the menus area, if I click the locations tab, there's a primary menu and a secondary menu. Right now, we don't have a menu assigned to the secondary menu area. And so what I can do is look under Customize. When I click Customize here, it's going to open the Customizer, uh, which will show me a version of uh, the live site here on the right. Again, I'm going to verify that my URL is correct. I'm at the staging subdomain you can see here up at the top left. But if I go in Divi under Header and Navigation, um, this part of the customizer will actually disappear if you're using the theme builder and the global header, which I'll be building in the next few minutes. And so right now I have just the default Divi header that is included and uh, activated by default in any Divi site when, when you start out. And I've customized the typeface and the logo and everything like that. But this secondary menu area under header and navigation, here it's called the secondary menu bar. You can see right here that there are a few options. I've got our, our site blue color set as a background color. I've got a font style Montserrat and uh, the bold. The drop down, uh, I don't have a drop down present right here, but if I did, it would match the color. The drop down menu text I've tested, and there's a couple of options here for drop downs. They can fade, expand, slide, or flip. Um, but, and I have a text size and a letter spacing option as well. And so I do want to retain the phone number and the email address here in the secondary menu bar. Uh, and now, of course, the primary menu bar is this white space right here. And uh, this is uh, it contains the logo, the logo image. Um, this is not selected to be full width at the moment, but you could see if I do select it, you can see that brings it out to the full width of the website there. You can hide the logo image and have it reappear depending on how you want this to work. You've got all these options for the Divi default global header. Now I have this set so that the content scrolls underneath the header is visible at all times on every page of the website. And so this is what I want to duplicate in a, the theme builder as a global header. And so one thing I can do is I can go over here and I can just navigate to the real website in a different tab to keep myself a reference open uh, to see what the header should really look like um, when I'm duplicating it over here in the, the staging site. And so I'm going to go back and uh, if uh, I close by hitting that X, I don't want to save any of my changes in the customizer there. Um, and actually, I do want to show you one more thing in the customizer in this header section that I didn't show you, which is fixed navigation settings. This in the default is where I do have it fixed. Uh, and you can, you can see that the fixed menu height is just the same. You can have that actual height go a little bit smaller if you want to, um, say I have it go to 30 pixels instead of 40 as you roll uh, under it there. And that gives a little bit of animation for the header just in the, in the, uh, you know, in the interest of uh, visual interest. I'm just going to leave it the way that it was and hit publish. And this menu will stay available to me in the background. If I disable the global header later that I'm going to create now, then uh, I can get back to this exact menu that we used to have. And so let me go and uh, close out here and go down into Divi. I'll show you under the Divi menu under theme builder. You can see that what I do have is a global footer. 
uh, and uh, here what I'll do is under mountain space I'll right click visit site and click open in a new tab so now I've got a few different tabs open for my reference. One is the staging site, and I can see my changes on the front end, and I'm the only one that can see this because I'm logged in as an administrator. I can also see what's happening at the live site over here. If you look at the URL, uh, that's not gonna change until I push the staging site over to live after I'm done. And so I'm gonna continue to work between these two tabs the uh, WordPress press admin area and the uh, looking at the live site, but only at the staging subdomain. And so the first thing I can do as I'm over here is uh, uh, one of the things that I'm gonna take care of is to look at the site updates uh, and see what needs to be updated before I start to work. Uh, make sure that uh, all of this uh, works very well. Let's see. <clears throat> First of all, let's uh, select all the themes and update, including Divi, and then make sure that the site works um, with the Divi updating from 4.12 to 4.174. And uh, as this is updating, it looks like it's delivered a success message. I can go back to the WordPress updates page and see that the themes are all up to date. Now let's go back to that site that I just updated and I'm gonna hit reload or refresh and uh, make sure that the Divi site is still working as it should. Yep, looks great. Click over to services, co-working services, um, looking very good. The sign up now, of course, the links are gonna go to that external. Uh, let's see, I've got a fr frequently asked questions, accordion drop down right here. Everything seems to be working well. The contact form is um, a global footer down here at the very bottom. Uh, so there's a contact form down there. This map is being pulled in from the Google Maps plugin that I'm using. And of course, I am not using the Google Maps at the staging subdomain. I'm using Google Maps at the home, uh, excuse me, at the real site. And so you can see that the map is working down here at the very bottom. This global footer, let's go back into the WordPress site. Um, this global footer is actually from get in touch all the way down through the contact form and then the map at the very bottom. And so what happens is on any page, if you're on any page of the website, when you're on a page, the contact URL is just the page URL with a, uh, uh, if you look at the URL there, it's just a hashtag contact. And I have that labeled down here at the bottom where um, right here is the hashtag contact. This section is marked with a custom CSS class. And so I could show you that inside of the global footer too. So if you're anywhere on the page and you click contact, it just scrolls you smoothly down to here. You get a phone number address, email address, and use the form below message. And of course, this is just um, an included form that sends an email to the client, the site owner. And so let's go back here to the WordPress dashboard. Before I show you around inside of the Divi theme builder, let's go ahead and update all the plugins. I'm gonna go ahead and select all and click update plugins. And then I'll just kind of click around again at the live site and make sure that uh, that's all working. Now I'm, I'm kind of watching this update. You can see that it's just kind of um, a blank screen right here. And uh, as this is happening in the background, of course, what was that seven plugins or something like that, or eight, eight plugins all being updated at the same time. And I could see just came up um, showing me that the rest of all the plugins um, have given me this success message. I could scroll down to the bottom. Uh, all updates have been completed is showing me down here, just like before. If I go to the WordPress updates page now, uh, I have the latest version of WordPress uh, and the plugins and themes are all up to date. 
So let's click back over here and I'm going to the, again, on the staging subdomain, make sure the site's working with all plugins working. If I wanted to, I could test the contact form. I'm actually using the included uh, Divi contact form. And so uh, that's not actually powered by a plugin, uh, but other things are working well. This is all Divi stuff. There's a video here. Um, where we have, uh, I've got the video hosted at Vimeo.com um, and we have a, some drone footage here looking and rising up uh, out of the workspace here. That looks great. Everything seems to be working well. Let's just quick check the FAQs, make sure these accordions are working. And now I have an updated site. Now at this point, I could go back into Gridpane and I could click staging to live uh, after testing my updates. And this is where I can make site updates in the background while the live site at the real URL is still up. Uh, and then I can go back and uh, go uh, back and click staging to live. But before I do that, I'm actually going to go ahead and build a new header here. Um, uh, that, which is the real request for the client that I'm going to be working on. And so inside of WordPress, let's look under Divi Theme Builder. And I mentioned the global footer. Now this footer uh, is on the website, um, as I mentioned, the bottom of every single page. It starts here at the get in touch section. You can see that there's a little dividing line right here that goes from a white background to a little gray background. And um, this whole thing is the global footer. Again, the map isn't working, but only because this is at the staging subdomain. If I go to home, of course, none of these changes that I've made at the staging subdomain have affected the real URL yet. And uh, when I bring it to live, I'll go and make sure and test that footer. And so let's look at the global footer. I'm going to look uh, at this edit button right here. I'm editing the global footer layout. This is that purple bar telling me what I'm doing here. And I can see that it starts at the get in touch section. And so if I click, you know, the section settings here, you can see that under advanced and CSS ID and classes, I've added a CSS ID called contact and so that's a custom id that i've used and in that way i can go um you know uh, let me close this by hitting the x i'm going to discard and exit because i didn't make any changes but if i go to uh, appearance menus i just want to show you that the menu item contact here is a custom link what i've done is create a custom link here and then clicked add to menu and under this custom link, you could see that the URL is just the plain hashtag contact with no spaces after or before. And what that does is, uh, you know, that makes the contact rollover to be a, uh, the U whatever URL you are on slash hashtag contact. And that scrolls the user right down to that section. And you can mark that section however you like. And so, okay, here we are back in the WordPress admin and let's look at Divi Theme Builder once again. Now, what I wanna do is add a global header. Now, of course, it would be nice if I could click add global header and I could add it, you know, do something like duplicate the existing header, which is the Divi default header. That's not something that's possible in Divi. So I'm gonna be building a global header from scratch and um, showing that uh, now, of course, what I have here is just a global header layout area that's blank. It's a section with um, the ability to add a row inside and an, inside the row, I'll be able to add uh, my different modules and things like that. And so let's pause right here. I, I wanna show you one more thing before we proceed with building this global header. You can see that this global header um, has appeared on every one of these templates. Now these two with, with red are not active templates. What I have is a default website template 
and also a, a, a website template that only shows on blog posts. This blog posts template has a custom body. And what this enables me to do is allow the client to go in and write blog posts without having to learn Divi. Uh, they go in and they can go ahead and look at um, the regular post editor using the block editor um, in order to make blog posts and add blog posts. So the first thing I'm gonna do, because I know this site isn't live, I can just play with things. I can break the site and then restore it again without the public seeing any of my changes. And so I'm gonna save changes and this global header is now on every page. Let's take a look at if the user were to go to posts, all posts, and uh, you could see that the post title here is just uh, extended on this post. Uh, this is a weird layout inside of the uh, admin. But if you click the title of the post or click the edit button, it's welcoming me to the block editor. I can close that right there. And you can see that the client has written a blog post, not in Divi, but inside of uh, just the regular post editor. There's, uh, you know, they can use a featured image for this blog post. And this, this blog post will now, if I go over here, uh, let's go ahead and um, let's, let's click this permalink. And I'm gonna right click the post and view the post in new tab. And now here is a customized layout. So the featured image is used here and it's also used in the background with a blue. There's this nice overlapping area. This is such a long title and that's why that title is so long inside the admin area as well. Uh, but that's the post title and the featured image. And then this is the layout that the client has used as a blog post and then comments below, etc. And then, of course, that footer is a global footer. And so if they're in the blog post and they go up here, uh, they can go ahead and get down to that blog post. One thing I'm noticing that I'll need to fix or that will, will be fixed when I actually add a global header uh, is that um, there's no header here. The reason that happened, and if I go to the FAQ or even just the home page here, you can see now my menu is gone. Uh, and that, the reason for that is because back over here in the admin area under Divi theme builder, this global header is blank. There's, there's nothing in here, you know, and that's why. So here's where I've wanting, I'm wanting to build the global header. And um, so let's go into, I can go into this blog post and just close that tab. But if I go in here under home, the last thing I want to show you before I really begin and proceed to build this global header is that I want to show you that you can, if you enable the visual builder on any page of the website, um, you can actually edit global areas from the theme builder directly in the uh, editor right here. So here I'm editing the body of this page. You know, you can see that there's my different um, editing control panel items for modules, rows, and sections coming up. But if I go down to the bottom to this footer, as I roll my mouse over, this bright green tells me that I can edit the footer template directly from this page if I want to. So I'm just going to say exit visual builder. That brings me back to the live page that I was editing. So if I look at the real website, um, the live website is at themountainspace.com. And uh, this uh, header has this blue color. Um, it has the logo. It's using the Montserrat font in bold and all caps. And it's kind of a certain distance. What we're looking to change here, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, is that we're going to bring this secondary uh, kind of top bar um, in uh, larger and big enough to contain a message, a message for all users of the website that can see that from every page. And I might add some nice functionality too, maybe shrink it down or make it disappear when the user scrolls. And uh, I'll show you how I'll kind of mastermind the way that's going to work. Um, but so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, actually open up a new tab. Actually, let, let's just go ahead and click uh, WP admin, WP dash admin after the URL of the real website. Now I'm at the live website and I'm going to visit the site in a new tab. 
And here's how I'm organizing my my work area and organizing uh, my thoughts. My uh, grid pane hosting tab is in between. The live site is on the very far right. And I don't want to make any changes on this live site, uh, themountainspace.com. What I'm doing is making changes over here at the staging subdomain. And so the staging subdomain. So at, in each case, I've got the WP admin dashboard and the live site. And I have also got the WP admin dashboard of the real site. This is the staging site. Apologize for that. And over here on the right, the far right, the real website on the right. So this is my reference that I'm trying to duplicate here. Uh, so if I go back over to the dashboard of the re real site, I could go under appearance, customize, and look at all the settings that I have uh, here at the mountain space. You could see that under the customizer, there is a header and navigation visible to me, and it gives me all these options. Now let's go back for a second to the staging subdomain and um, I'm going to go down here and I, all I did was create a, a section with a single column inside of, excuse me, a row with a single column inside of this section for my global header. So I'm going to save it. This is in the staging subdomain. Don't forget. And when I click the X to get out of there, now I'm in Divi Theme Builder. You can see my global header is present on both the default website template and the posts template here. Now, as I demonstrated earlier, the posts template has a custom body. And uh, that custom body is defined if I hit settings. You could see the template settings for this particular template are going to be visible on all posts. And so, of course, you can define a template to be on a lot of different options, whatever you want. And in this way, you can use Divi's global theme builder in order to build global or partially global templates for header, footer, and body areas of the website. So I'm just going to close that. I'm not changing the, the posts template at all. It still tells me that all changes are saved back here. But here's what I want to show you under Appearance Customize. As I look at customizing the mountain space, now you could see that the heading and navigation visible over here at the real website, header and navigation under general settings is now not there. And so because I have defined a global header in the Divi theme settings, um, I'm not able to get to this uh, default header anymore in the staging site. And so I'm gonna hit the X to get out of the customizer. Uh, of course, the customizer just opens an overlay uh, back on top of where you were working before. And so here we are in the theme builder. Again, I'm gonna open up the global header, verifying again, I'm in the staging site here. Uh, and uh, let's take a look at what I have happening over here under header and navigation. And so I have kind of a two section um, area here that are both are not full width. Uh, as you saw me demonstrate, uh, you know, under the primary menu, you can make the content go to full width, which would stretch itself out to the edge of the user's browser window. Uh, but this is not full width. Um, and so if I go back uh, over to the theme builder here, here, this is defined as the width of the content of the website. So of course, this is a full width image you're looking at, but here is the width of the content area uh, that I'm, I'm working with. On a desktop, the content area is a certain width and it leaves the, uh, the ability to stretch out to uh, you know full size screen if somebody's using a large screen like I am here. And of course it's mobile responsive. Um, and so we're gonna make sure the mobile responsiveness of the header works as well. Actually, let's take a look at that right here at the home page. Uh, if I go to, uh, let's see, how can I show you? At the real website, um, I'm, I can stretch the browser window using my mouse over here. But one thing you could do is just click inspect. I right clicked anywhere on the page and I clicked inspect in order to get the um, Chrome browser tools over here. And then you can look at this, you can turn on the responsive um, uh, editor over here so that you can actually drag 
the website until it gets to the, your, cer your certain breakpoints. Okay, you can see moving from a desktop version to a tablet version. What I have is um, a hamburger menu with a drop down, and that's where I've defined this blue color and the different items right here. And as I go down to a um, mobile phone view, basically stays the same. So if somebody has a really skinny phone screen, they're gonna get the menu that works quite well. And so let's go back up here, go back turning off the mobile responsive settings and I can click this X uh, to get back to where I was. One last thing I should show you under the Chrome Dev Tools. I like to work with Chrome Dev Tools over here on the right hand side. And you know, Firefox has this ability as well as um, other browsers. Uh, but if I click these three dots, I'm docked on the side right now. Uh, so many people like to work with the dock on the bottom. Uh, that shows you the website in the top section and it shows you all the information you need in the dev tools here at the bottom. I find that to be a little, a little hard to use. And so I like to click the three dots and I like to dock it on the side. And that shows me my website on the left and uh, my Chrome tools on the right hand side. So I'm clicking this X. Um, now that's, let's go away from the real website and let's go back into the theme builder so that we can look here. Now I'm, I'm looking at, um, there's some spacing issues that I'm not going to be using because this is, um, just my header area and I want it to be really skinny. You know, I need this header to be quite skinny to match the other website where the header is just a you know, real small and skinny at the top. I may add some animation so that when the user scrolls, it gets smaller or that blue top bar might disappear as the user scrolls, but the menu items are still visible so that from anywhere in the page, they can go ahead and click the menu item that they need to navigate either to the contact at the footer or to a different page of the website. Well, there's two ways to go about, or actually there's three ways to go about duplicating and customizing the header that we're building right here, uh, the global header. And um, the first thing that I started to do was to go ahead and build from scratch. And um, uh, without, uh, you know, some guidance, um, it can be difficult to figure that out on your own. And of course, I'm providing this tutorial for you. But uh, secondly, you could go um, to, uh, you know, elegantthemes.com. Let me go switch over to the screen capture again. At elegantthemes.com, uh, um, if you scroll down to any page, you can click blog or recent posts. And what I've done here, let me just go back. What I've done is I've done a search for free global header. And free global headers are downloadable .json files that you can just import into your website and customize from there. That's what I'm gonna be doing um, in order to save time uh, and find one that I really like. And so this one right here, the, um, uh, the produce box layout pack, this blog post teaches you how to create it, but at the same time, it also offers you the ability to uh, to go ahead and download it. Uh, if you click get for free today, you can download this global header. And uh, looking at this little animation GIF, you can see what it does. It has the two bars. It changes into one bar and has the website. It even has a call to action button over here on the right hand side. And I'm going to be changing the colors, the font, and uh, bringing in my own menu for the website and testing that on the mountain space to see if that's exactly what I want to do. Of course, it offers a uh, tablet size as well as a phone size right here. Uh, but let's go back one more time. And in the Elegant Themes blog, if you just type the word header, uh, you can find... Uh, actually, global header is what I had searched for before. 
And uh, this blog post is uh, a very, this doesn't have a download to duplicate this easily on your own website, like we're going to do here in a moment. But uh, this blog post from June 7th, 2022, how to build a global header with Divi's full width menu module. And so this one shows that, uh, you know, this uh, is, again, similar to what I'm looking to do. Uh, but instead of having to go through all of these steps, um, as we go down here to create this yourself, you can certainly follow this tutorial on the elegantthemes.com blog and uh, figure out uh, all these different things. There is some custom code uh, that, uh, the, that this person has been using, for example, that's vertically aligned. This is some custom CSS right in the row that says align items center. And that'll be the main element, custom CSS for the row, for example. But I don't need to do that. Um, what I'm going to do is free global header. And I do like this free global header download for the Divi's produce box layout pack. Of course, this matches one of the pre-designed layout packs that uh, Divi and Elegant Themes provides. Uh, but from looking at this, if you just click get for free today, uh, as long as you join the email list, and if you're already on the email list, you're not going to be duplicated uh, and get multiple emails from them. But um, what I'm going to do is place my email address here and then click download. And this little block will be replaced with the download link. So I'll pause the video here and uh, do that. And then we'll bring this as a global header layout into the Mountain Space staging site. So I'll pause the video here and uh, then we'll get started. Okay, so now I've put my email address in and clicked the download button. And if I switch back to the, the screen capture, I can show you guys that the, uh, the, you know, the opt-in form here has transformed itself into a button that says download the files. And so this is downloading a zip file into my downloads folder. And uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'll reveal, let's see, just opening my uh, file explorer here. I'm right clicking and gonna also explore the downloads. <clears throat> bring that over here and you can see this downloads here let's just go ahead and where am I gonna put it let's just put it on on the desktop bring this over here move to desktop and this is called Divi produce box header footer template if I right click and click extract all extract this will make a folder that will be named the same thing Double click that folder, double click that folder, and inside is a .json file. And so this is the header and footer template that we can bring in. Um, I'm going to bring in the header and footer template all together, and I'm not going to be using the footer, uh, just the header and then customizing it. And so let's see, let's go back to my browser. And, uh, you know, what I'm going to do is just X out of here and I'll uh, discard and exit this global header. Um, as you saw before, um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete the global header from each one of these. This is, I didn't really build anything here. And so I'm just gonna delete that global header and uh, hit save. Now this is a good example of if you started to build a global header and you wanted to go back to the default header, if you just delete that outside, out of the theme builder here, you could just go ahead and uh, go back to the website, hit refresh. Now my global header is back again. Uh, and so this is what we're gonna be duplicating but with a little extra fancy stuff. And so let's go back into here and uh, the way that I'm going to import this is going to be over here in the portability area, the up and down arrows that you can see right here. I'm going to import <clears throat> and I'm going to find that JSON file. And so let's go back to desktop and um, let's find that. That folder is called Divi Produce Box Header Footer Template. Here's the JSON file. 
Now it's the .json. Um, I'm going to override the default website template. Yes. I'm going to allow import to override existing assignments. No. Because what I want is I don't want to get rid of the footer, the global footer that I've created here. Um, and so allow import to override existing assignments. Let's import the Divi theme builder templates now. In fact, hold on a second before I do this. Um, I know that this global footer and this custom footer here are something that I've created. And so what I always do <clears throat> before I import something new because that JSON file contains both a global header and a footer, I don't want to replace this global footer. I want to preserve that uh, and keep on using it um, on the site. Uh, and so I'm actually going to go ahead and duplicate this default website template um, so that this global footer remains saved. And so you could see what I did just there. I hit the duplicate icon right here. It created a new... Uh, template here and it's asking me what what pages do I want to use it on if I just X out um, this is the default website template copy so what I've done is I've made a copy of this down here and so it, it calls this a uh, custom footer and I can make this the global footer um, by uh, you know editing it here and uh, putting it on all pages and so <clears throat> I know that this isn't being used on any of the website pages right now because it's in red. It has the unassigned little, uh, little tool tip that comes up right there. And uh, now if I save changes, um, now this custom footer down here uh, is one that I'm going to save. Custom footer original just doing a little bit of labeling so that I can remember um, what I'm working with here uh, and um, you know these two this one and this one are ones that I had saved in this same way when I had brought in and created the global footer there so this one is the custom footer original I know that it's sitting there uh, and I can control the visibility of it whether it's on a page or not and so uh, now I'm ready to bring in and replace it with replace the, the, the global header on every page of the website okay back to the portability button I'm gonna import I'm gonna select this file here it is again open now I'm I do I'm gonna leave the default settings here the override the default website template yes because I'm gonna add it right here and I'm also gonna allow the import to override existing assignments and that's gonna replace the header and the footer and then I can go ahead and and uh, continue to use the footer that I created before and saved so I'm gonna import Divi theme builder templates it's given me a progress bar and that was it there it is global header and global footer and so I'm going to save changes. And, you know, um, I just want to point out again that this is not overriding the live site. This is only working at the staging subdomain. So as we work here, if I hit home, if I go back to the uh, staging homepage, now I've got uh, a very interesting um, header look. And let's see what it did to the footer. Yeah, it made this footer. That was it matches the food box layout pack that you can get within your own Divi site, um, and you can see that uh, it's of course it's the wrong footer. Um, and so okay, this is great. This is great. I, I'm I'm really liking this uh, this design, the way that it animates, um, and it's going to be very customizable uh, for my client here. And so let's look, go back to the theme builder and uh, let's see I'm gonna take this global footer and I'm gonna trash it because I want to use this custom footer this actually original custom footer as my global footer and so I'm gonna delete that global footer I'm gonna take and uh, bring this custom footer original back up here to the global footer and I'm gonna save changes Okay, let's take a look at what happened. Again, reminding you I'm on the staging site, not on the live site. Uh, and so let's go back down to the footer. There we go. 
I've got my original footer. Of course, as you know, <laughs> the map isn't working at the staging subdomain. No big deal. All right, great. So here's what I want to do um, with uh, this menu right here. Oh, I really like that animation. I want this orange to be blue. Yep. Um, I want this tan to be white. I want this font to be Montserrat. I want this logo to be the logo. I want to get rid of these social icons, or I might actually replace them. These social icons down here might be redundant or unnecessary if I have the social icons up here at the top. That's probably what I'll do. Again, another improvement on the client site here. And then um, I'm going to leave this call to action button, uh, and I'm going to have it go to the same place as this join button here, the sign up button for customers of my client. Um, this is great. All right, so as we go back here into global header, let me pause the video here and uh, take a sip of my soda. But what I'm gonna do is hit the pencil icon under global header. And um, now I've got a uh, working header that I can begin to use. Now, of course, I can't scroll up and down and see the animation here when I'm working on this header. That's the advantage if you go back here if you're say working on the home page and you click enable visual builder you can actually work on this global header in place like i showed you before if you hit this green editor edit header template when you're inside the visual builder now right now i'm editing the body area right uh, but if i go up here and click edit header template now i can see the animation and work on just the global header template up here and I can't work on the body area at the same time when I'm doing this. So let's pause the video and then I'll come back and begin editing these colors, fonts, backgrounds, and logo. Okay, I'm back. Let's take a look. What do I have up here? I have a section and then an additional section below. Excellent. So I'm going to take and um, I hit this, the section settings gear icon. Uh, I can watch my animation there. Great. Um, now, as far as the design of this section, I've got, what do I have here? Content, background, orange. Now, is this my color or is this, do I have a global color? I do. I'm going to make that blue global color. And I'm going to save the section background. Okay. First step. Done. Looking great. All right, now let's see these these two tan areas here. I've got this section, this lower section. Okay, lower section, gear icon, background. Let's make it white. Do I have a global white? No, I have a global gray that I had used before. But I'm going to make this background white and save. Okay, now if I want to save my work as I go, I want to go down here to the purple dot at the bottom and click save. So now I'm saving the um, visual edit that I've made. Now I'm still working in the global header up here. And so now when this goes up to the top, I don't want this to go to green. I need this to go and remain white when it's up here. And so let's see, that goes to the section edit. Um, one of the things that, uh, okay. So this section, let's see, let's just look at the row. <clears throat> There's a row background, doesn't have a background color. Okay. This row right here, how about this section? If I move it this way, yeah, you can see that some of my controls are hidden. Uh, there's a row right here. There's a module right here. Um, my, let's see, there's a button module, a menu module with a logo on the left. And so if I look at this, you could see, if you see my mouse, I'm going to the bottom left here and I'm going to choose the wireframe view. And now what I'm, what I'm 
here editing here is everything that's contained within this global header shown as a wireframe view. Uh, much easier to see, much easier to find what you want to work on. And so for the this section down here, let me see, I'm going to open the gear icon of that lower section. And let's see, the design, is there a transformation? Nope. Let's see what else is going on. <clears throat> I wonder if advanced, I've got no, no custom CSS inside of this header. Are there any conditions? No. Okay. So the section background, obviously I have, oh, is it hover? Uh, no, it's sticky. Okay. I think this is what I want. Yes, look at that. So in the section settings, the lower section settings, there's a sticky tab and a desktop tab. So let me get back out. I just found what I was looking for. So I'm going to go back to the desktop view down here at the bottom left. Um, again, still editing the just the global header at the top here. And that that when this section goes up, it is sticky, which means that the content is going to slide underneath. Um, and now I want the background of my sticky section to be white. So I'm going to go to this second section here. That's the lower section. I'm going to go to design. No, excuse me. I'm going to go to the background and then right here, there's my sticky. I want that just to remain white. <clears throat> And uh, there's no other settings here. There's not a gradient or a color. Of course, you could have a gradient, an image, a, a, a video. Do you want to play a video in that small menu section? Absolutely not. Let's go ahead and uh, click the uh, save right there. And I'm going to go over here on the right hand side and continue to save my changes. And now you can see I have a problem. The menu text color. When it goes up into that what used to be a green background, the text changed over to white. And so I've got to fix that. So let's let's do that next. I'm going to go to this module. That's a gray module, module settings, gear icon. The I'm using the header menu. That's correct. That that's the correct menu I'm looking at. The the logo is not defined as correct. So I'll be changing that as well. But if I look at the content, it's the header menu. That's correct. And uh, for the design, for the menu text, under the active link, no, not the menu text. I want the menu text color when it's sticky. There's my sticky tab. Menu text color when it's sticky. I want to be this gray color. Perfect. So the menu text color when it's sticky is that gray color. The menu font style, I want it to be all caps. The menu font, I need it to be Montserrat. And font way bold. Okay, awesome. This is looking good. I like that rollover where it does a lighter gray. And again, I just lost my light. So let me just focus my camera. There you go. <laughs> all right, all right, so great. I'm gonna hit save on this, on that module. I'm gonna hit save at the bottom right. And let's begin to look. Oh, we're really getting somewhere now. Now, um, this module background I want to be white as well and we'll see that it looks like it's got a box shadow and rounded corners I like that I, I really I'm going to go ahead and edit this module now and with this men it's a menu module the design of that menu module has a box shadow no it's not showing a box shadow that's fine let's see what it looks like when I get the background is there a background color? No. Okay, so that background, that background color is coming from somewhere else. I'm going to X out of that. And let's see. This is a menu section. It looks like this background module 
does have a a beige a beige background let's see I can look at the row maybe it's the row that has the tan background color nope adding background color it doesn't have one all right isn't this interesting let me look again at the header menu and let me just make sure there's no custom CSS that I'm missing. Nope. Design wise, background is under content. Uh, <clears throat> menu text layout, it's left aligned. Yes, that's fine. The content itself, the logo, I don't want shopping cart or anything like that. This is where I thought that I would find the background color. If any of these are blue, uh, that's where you would see, it would tell you that that's a, that's, um, a change, that that has content inside of it. Um, it's an interesting problem that I have right here. Let's see, I want... One thing, okay, here's what I can see. This module is located here, but it extends out to the side. I know what this is. This is the background color of the row column. Here's the column structure. There's a column on the left and a column on the far right. And the background of the row itself is not there so let me see the background of the left column is the beige there it is okay let's change that into white there we go there we go so that and if you hit this little arrow you're from within the column settings you go back to the row that shows that column now this right hand column is this one right here on the right that one doesn't have a background color. Okay, so I'm going to hit the green to save that column, and then I'm going to hit the green to save the row itself. Uh, really starting to get somewhere now. Okay, so let me hit save. Looking very good. Let's look at this button. join join is the lettering that i want because it's going to be the same place as this join menu item so that join um let me go let me just go ahead and click save on that uh save changes down on the bottom right don't forget to save changes often early and often and so let's see if i go join what do i want this to be I'm going to go over here to this menu. I know I, what I can do is add the link up here. Um, let me see what I have here. I went back to the real website. It is the mountains, uh, members dot the mountain space dot com slash sign up. I'm going to right click that because this is an external link. Um, uh, this I'm pulling this in to the appearance menu settings in WordPress. Uh, but if I right click that link and click copy link address, now I have that link URL on my clipboard. Now let's go back into the theme builder. Now, of course, I'm still editing this global header. Uh, and so let's go into this button module, the link for this button module. I'm going to hit control V and paste and I'm going to open it in the same window. Yeah. All right. So before I save that though, I've got the text join. The link is that URL. Let's look at the design, uh, the design of the text. That's not applicable because you could see that it's white. I like that rollover with the little arrow too, but the button design, Button text size, uh, that looks pretty good to me. I do need to change the font to Montserrat. But uh, the button text color is defined as white. The button background. Now, here's an interesting issue. If I go to global, 
and I change that into blue, then of course I, it doesn't appear as a button. Do I like that? I do, I do, okay, join. It looks like it's a very subtle call to action button when it's blue and then it comes and uh, it makes itself blue. It stays blue and it makes itself in that white background. Okay, I like that. It needs to move down just a little bit for the sticky area. Oh, I'm really starting to like this global header. Okay. Okay, custom styles for button, yes. So, okay, save changes. Hit the green, hit the green watch the progress okay that's saved let's see all right so let's put a little bit of space oh yeah it's funny um uh, i'll have to look at this and see if i really need to add the space at the top it looks like it's actually going to work perfectly let me uh look at this text again i mentioned that i've got a not the text I, oops uh, I've got to use a custom style for the button the button text color text size button font Montserrat bold all caps use the icon of a right side arrow no text no box shadow okay save save getting there let's look at the logo in this menu module this menu module has a logo look when i brought in uh, it brought in some um, additional graphics that uh, i can use these two photos uh, that are copyright free um, and uh, usable for commercial or any kind of project uh, of course i'm not going to do that the mountain space logo with red is what i'm going to bring in it's too small so uh, when you're looking at it here, if you click the blue little paintbrush, depending on what you're trying to edit, it'll bring you to the right spot. So if I bring it over here, I'm editing this logo in the menu itself. So here's logo. Um, hmm. Nope. Let's see. Why is that logo so small? Let me just save it. Let me save it. Looking pretty good. I still have a spacing issue on this join button, except when I roll over it. So we'll see how that looks. But this logo certainly, <laughs> certainly needs to be... Oh, I see. Well... Is this the same menu? Yeah, same menu. Let's just make sure. I don't have any custom code. And under design, let's see, under content, logo. Desktop, tablet. There it is right there. Phone, there it is right there. I'm going to have to change this so that it has just the logo without the words on it for both tablet and mobile. And so let's go back to desktop for this logo on this menu. Sizing? No, this is for the entire menu itself. There it is. <laughs> Sizing. Logo width, logo max width. Let's look at starting to look better. 45% on tablet, 40% on mobile, on phone, 60 pixels on desktop. Definitely not. 100, how about 100%?
No, too big. Let's bring it down to a nice percentage. Now we're getting somewhere. 23%. Really liking that. Let's look at the real website. Okay. Active link in the blue color would be better, but I like the logo size and the way it moves up into the side like that. This is the home page, so active logo should be the blue. All right. Let's just check size on this logo sizing. Nothing else that I want to change. Spacing, no changes. Green arrow to save. Green save button to save. Again, I'm just working in the global header. Um, oh, this is looking great. Um, let's go make this blue for the active link. Menu design. Menu text. Active link color. Let's make it the global blue. There we go. Home is global blue. Save, save, save. All right, now it's time to go and refresh uh, and exit the Visual Builder and see if the Join Call to Action button is going to work with its spacing or not. Uh, because as you remember, I was having that spacing issue. Right now, it looks like it's working. Uh, but we'll just have to see. Uh, so I'm going to hit Exit Visual Builder. If I hadn't saved my changes, it would then give me an error message. Hey, you're, you didn't save your changes before. Oh boy, this is great. This is looking so good. All right. And as I go down, my footer is still working. Of course, the map will work once I bring it to the real URL. All right. Now, these social icons, I'm going to Facebook, Instagram, Facebook, Instagram. All right, enable visual builder. I just clicked the purple, enable visual builder. I'm going to edit the header template by hitting the green tab. And now in this top section, Here's where we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Inside of this section, <clears throat> I have some different modules. Here's an area where it, this is an empty, empty column. I could add a module. Don't forget, I need to put the text that my client wants. So right here though, you could see that this is where the social icons are. Can I get to the gear icon of this module? No, I can't really get there. What's my solution? Go down here, open up the wireframe view, and I know this is the social media follow. So here's the row layout, and I could see that it's actually two, uh, two rows. So, you know, if you hit the row here, you could see that what I have selected is a 50-50 row. But let's go to the social media follow, and let's get rid of Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm going to go back over here to the real website. I'm going to right click this Facebook link and copy link address. Then we'll go back into this Facebook social, the link, control V to paste. There we go. And now Instagram, right click, copy link address from the real website. And now I'm going back to the staging website, Instagram settings icon link and control V to paste, save. And I think it looks good color wise as a, and I'll click save over here. That was an auto save. Now when I click save, it'll really save. I didn't make any changes, but. It would let, give me an error message. So, okay, back to desktop view. I'll still be in the visual builder here. 
But uh, now Facebook and Instagram will go to the correct place. Over here on the right, on the right. Oh, look at what's so. What do I have right here? A module. I have that call to action module. Let me see. What is this? Or button module. Yeah, button modules over here. I can add this module. Really, what I want is this message to be up here. Um, okay, let's look at this wireframe view. I want to change this row to have three columns, I think, instead of two. So this button, I think what I have in this button is, um, it, since it's down here, uh, what do I have? Negative margin? Let's just take a look. This button, the way it holds itself at the top. Um, let's look at the spacing. I, it's got some padding. And when it's sticky, it's got a zero margin at the top. Well, I don't really care. It's working. It looks great. It puts itself up into here um, when we're looking at it. But what I want to do is I won't change anything um, if I change this into three column instead of two. But I want a lot of room for my text. I want a lot of room for the client's you know, text to be in the middle of the page. So if uh, instead of this three column, 33% each, I'm going to go for 25, 50, 25. And then I'm going to add um, a text module here. And now I've saved the text that I want. And this now I can change this for the client anytime. So I'm copying this text. I'm going to paste it right in here. So this is paragraph text. Yeah. So for this paragraph text, not heading text, but paragraph text, I want this to be Montserrat still. And I still want it to be bold. I still want it to be all caps. I want it to be in white. I think it's just going to automatically go white, but I'll just select white. And then we can take a look at it. We're in the wireframe view now, but what if I look at the desktop view? I haven't saved anything yet. Hey, hey, hey. Looking pretty good. Oh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Um, I think I need uh, less. I need less. I either need less line height or I need less text. I would love to keep this to two lines. I want to keep this to two lines. A couple, couple ways of doing that. Um, let me save it though. Save, save. If it's in a desktop size, it looks great. I've got a little more room for text. However, if I go to tablet, oh, that's not bad at all. Tablet looks pretty good. On tablet, actually, I need to make this logo a lot smaller on tablet. Design, sizing, logo on tablet. That was 45%. No, I need um, logo max height. Nope. Still, whoops. I want to leave that on auto. So I'm going to refresh it back to none or none. Yeah. Refresh it back to none. I want some spacing um, in this logo. If I click here, actually, it's not too bad. I just don't like the way it's touching uh, at the top here. If that logo, okay. You know what I need is, uh, I need some spacing. I need a little bit of margin or padding. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. 12, 12 pixels of padding. Oh, way better, way better. 
Uh, but let's just make sure on the phone. Let's bring that back down a little bit on the phone. Six pixels. Okay. Green check. Save button at the bottom right. Awesome. I'm looking at the tablet view. I'm looking at the mobile phone view. Holy cow, this is looking real good. Let's look at the desktop view. All right, Jason, I think this is looking really good. Let me hit save one more time. And then I'm going to exit Visual Builder. It takes me back to the page I was working on when I exit the Visual Builder. I still think maybe line height on that message would look a little bit better, reducing the line height just a little. Oh, look at this. I have this little problem. The button is too low inside of this top. Two things then. Button's too low and uh, reduce the line height here just a little bit. So let me enable the Visual Builder again. Edit header template, bright green. That gives me text right here for this text module. For design, not heading, but text text. I want the line height, 1.7M. Let's bring it back. 1.4, great. Now it does go to three lines if the person has a smaller desktop view, like a laptop. So I'm okay with that. I Because I reduced the line height, I think that's fine. It also gives the client a little more room if he wants to say more things, you know? Um, hey, look, there's a period right here and then no space. So if I go back to the content, uh, there we go, call for details. I wonder if you put a carriage return in there. Now that's another option, you know. Actually, here, I, I'm gonna suggest that we remove call for details. Much better. Now, I also need a little bit of spacing change. I like, I'd love that to be centered inside of that space right there. So what do I have? Spacing of this text module. I'm gonna add a tiny bit of padding. Just five pixels of padding. Let's make sure mobile responsiveness looks good. It's gonna keep five pixels of padding on tablet. Still looks good. Let's look at it on the phone. Sure, I can keep five pixels of padding there. That looks great. All right. Awesome. Let me go back. Desktop view. Save. Now, really starting to get there. I want this join. I want this little... Uh, you, you can see that, that there's just a little overhang right there. How am I going to solve that? I hit settings on this button. On the design, I'm going to, I am using custom styles for this button. Let's just hold on a second. Let me see what I have for spacing. There's the negative pixel. So negative margin, I should say. Negative margin is bringing this join button way up from down here into the next way up here. And so if I increase the negative margin, that's going to bring it up just a little bit more and center it in this area. So I pull that back this way. Check it out. What do I got? What looks the best? 118. Awesome. And let's look at the mobile view. 
already was looking at the mobile view for tablet. It disappears. For phone, the button disappears. Oh no, it goes down. The button goes down here. Where is it? <clears throat> On the tablet. Ah, look at that. Okay. Okay. So, let's see. That in tablet view margin I'm still going to bring a little bit of negative margin in there for tablet view as well as a little bit of bottom margin okay let's look at it for phone better negative 18 and 13 save and Save. Woohoo! I'm done. I'm done. This looks great. All right. Exit Visual Builder. Refresh. It actually was already refreshed. Yeah, Mountain Space. Now. Oh, okay. Last thing. Last thing. Got to remove these duplicate social icons from the home page. So it only exists on the home page. Let's look at services real quick. Mm hmm. Back to home. I just need to remove these two. Now, this time, I'm not going to click the bright green global header because I'm editing the actual body of the home page itself only. So look at that. Okay, inside of this section, this is a what is this? This is a this is a full width section. I didn't choose a full width section. This is just a big section. It's got a background image. But uh, here's my module with the title and the, the site title and the tagline and here is the module that I'm really just going to save to the library and then delete. Social icons, save to library. The reason I did that is if I want to bring these back, it's easy. So I'm just going to hit the trash can there. Um, and I think I'm done. Better hit save. Now, if that does that for you, it's auto saving, so make sure you hit save. Exit Visual Builder. Loving it. Loving it. All right. Totally awesome. So, yeah, anything else? I don't think so. Let's just take a look at the. The mobile responsiveness. If you want to, you can bring this and uh, dock it at the bottom to look at your mobile responsive settings right here. So you could do, you know, kind of whatever you want. You could choose a particular device. You can choose just have responsive and drag. What's this? 100%. There you go. Looking good. Okay. Turn that off. Bring my Chrome inspector back to the dock on the right. Loving it. All right. So it says all changes saved. Why is that? That's because when I was using the enable visual builder and I was editing here so that I could see the animation with scroll, I was saving this. Um, and then when I exited the Visual Builder, it goes back here and it's saved. However, <laughs> I'm just going to hit that save button anyway. And so I've got a global header that's here on the default website template. Um, I need this global header to also be present over here on posts. And so what I'm going to do is uh, add a custom header, use the global header, save changes 
I think that's the very last thing that I needed to do. Refresh the page. Awesome. Now, I don't actually have a link to the, the blog posts because the, the client is just starting to work on blog posts. There's only one blog post and we don't have that linked yet. Here's join. Here's join. The links are correct. Smooth scroll down to the contact form, etc. And the last thing. Okay, let's... The last thing. I'm done. Let's go back into the staging area for staging.themountainspace.com. I'm going to click staging to live. This is the last thing. And so now if uh, here's the real site, I'm looking at the real site here. It's got this global uh, default header that was the previous header. Um, oh, he needs his phone number and email address, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. You know what? Um, I'm going to talk to the client about remaining, having the social icons remain here and having the phone and email just visible on every page of the website in the contact area of the footer. That's perfect. And of course, the join call to action is going to be great. So yeah, that's great. Um, last thing I think I'm going to add uh no i'm just gonna leave that as a period we could arrange this however we like suppose he wanted to i suppose he wanted to change this just a little bit we could go in and anniversary special and does that dedicated desk? Now, nah, I think it's going to look best with the dash right here. I was thinking about bringing this to a second line. Let's just take a look. Nah, 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 nah. That, no. That's not the way to do this. Space, dash, space. That looks the best. This is about as small as a person's laptop screen would be. Um, yeah, and so I'm Xing out of that. I'm going to go ahead and hit X right here. I have unsaved changes and I'm going to discard and exit from those changes because that's not a change that I wanted to make. All changes are saved, but I can verify that. Now I think we are really ready to go. Client's going to love this. Okay, grid pane, staging. Staging to live. Copy the staging site to the live site. Absolutely. I'm going to select the staging push type, all files, push staging to live. Now here's my test pop-up. Um, it's going to give me green check boxes down the right-hand side to make sure that my environment is the same in my staging site and in the real site. The last thing I verify is that I'm actually working in the right URL. If I push a staging to live in the wrong URL, I could overwrite a real live site with the wrong with you know an empty staging site or something like that so make sure everything is all good it's time to change to php 7.4 but i'll do that um, when i do some updates later um, i don't i'm not going to need to test anything after that so push staging to live here we go we're getting a little notice it um, does some backups first you know, so the backup is beginning of the live site. So if I make a mistake and I push the staging site to live and I realize that I wasn't correct, I did it wrong, I shouldn't have pushed to live right then, I can go back and restore that backup. Um, Grid pane is so excellent for that. Um, I'm getting a whole bunch of success messages that you can see here. 75% staging to live. Um, and uh, it's still taking just a few minutes. Staging push completed successfully. Everything cleaned up. Staging notice. So I can close these notifications. This is the first one that came up. This is the last one. Staging to live success. Staging push completed. I'm so happy. Okay, the magical moment, go to the real website, 
hit reload and refresh taking a look awesome something's wrong look at that let's refresh one more time nope all right don't panic work still okay so now I need to make a quick change. Let's come back out, say OK, out of the customizer. Let me log in. Um, let's purge the cache at the server level and hit refresh. No, that didn't work exactly right. Purge initiated, that could take a little bit of time. Let's just take a look at the theme builder. Let me just click save right here, refresh the live site. Still not quite. And join is not looking exactly right either. Also, a little bit of spacing problem here at the mountain space. Before I go changing things inside the global header here, um, I'm, I'm going to go back into Divi options. Under perf general performance. I'm going to save changes. Let's just take a look. Refresh. That was it. That was it. So inside of Divi theme options under general performance, all I did was I went down to the bottom or even you could do it at the top and I clicked save changes. This cleared out the Divi static cache. There's another place that you might be able to find um, under builder advanced. If you have static CSS file generation enabled, then you might be able to, you might clear that cache um, and then save changes uh, uh, again. That mm, will help you now. Um, looking great. All right, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. It's time to text the client and say, "Hey, check out your your new header." Let's scroll down to the bottom to contact, and let's make sure the map is working. Looking great. All right. Super cool. Well, that was a pretty extensive and, um, you know, pretty uh, time consuming process to go through and uh, to make that change to customize a pre-designed global header, get it in at staging, and then bring staging back. Now, I'm gonna bill the client at about $100 an hour, tracking my time on that. Um, that's one of the, uh, you know, one of the things that I may include as far as my $100 a month uh, hosting and uh, website care plans. Um, those cover, you know, very small content changes. It covers my monitoring, my site updating, um, and, uh, you know, backups, backup restoration if needed. But uh, I just spent um, a certain amount of time. I'll look back and see uh, how many hours uh, down to the 15 minute increment and uh, charge the client for that accordingly. I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in and uh, following along. Uh, as I work on an existing Divi powered website using grid paid hosting, using the staging system, using, um, you know, global, the global theme builder, the, the global template, uh, templating system, uh, where I was able to create and use some uh, pre-designed elegant themes resources. And um, we'll see you next time. Thanks for being here.